Welcome to the place value division strategy. Today I'm going to show you how to use a place value chart to do division. Now some of you may have learned something called long division. Maybe you learned it from a YouTube video or your adults at home or older siblings. Long division is awesome and we're going to start working with long division in the spring right before we start dividing with decimals. But first I really want us to anchor to the idea of place value division because I really want you to see what's happening. When we use place value division, we look at each piece of a number and we divide it up into equal groups, which is what division is. Division is just taking an amount and breaking it up into equal groups. When we're dividing, there are two main pieces in a division expression. This first piece is called the dividend. You may have heard that word if you play Monopoly. So we've got the dividend, and then the piece we're dividing it by is the divisor. I like to think of the divisor as being like the person or the thing that's doing the dividing work. And it has the O-R on the end. That's often on the end of a word of a person who's doing something. Uh, maybe you have an actor or other words like that that end in O-R. That's the person who's doing the action. And that's really what's happening. The seven is acting upon the dividend, upon 3,748. It's breaking it up into seven equal groups or into groups of seven. So the divisor here is the one that's doing the dividing. To use the place value division strategy, what we do is we set up the information that we have on a place value chart. So to do that, I just take my number, 3,748, and we're going to set it up like a place value chart. Sometimes kids like to call it an HTO chart, and that's fine, um, but for this number, HTO is not enough. This would really be a thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones chart. But we're going to put it on a place value chart. The other kind of chart that we're going to use, we sometimes call a table, is going to be our table of multiples. To build a table of multiples, I put multiplying on one side and then whatever it is that I need the multiples of. Since I am dividing by 7, 7 is my divisor, that's the size of the table of multiples I'll be building. And then I just go down underneath my multiplication symbol. That's telling me how many times I am multiplying by 7. And then underneath the 7, I'm just going to start listing those multiples of 7. If you know your multiplication facts, this can go pretty fast. If you're not as solid with your multiplication facts, or you're working with a harder factor, then you're just going to have to skip count by whatever sort of table you're building. So for this one, I was skip counting by 7, or since I know my 7s, I could just list all my 7s as I go down the multiplication table of 7s. So again, as we work through place value division, our strategy is going to be putting our, divide, our dividend goes on a place value chart, and our divisor is what we make a table of multiples for. Let me show you how we'll do it. Again, let's work with 3,748, and we're going to divide it by 7. Just like I was showing you, I'm going to build um, a place value chart for my divisor. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I can put 3,748. This is the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. And then I'm going to build a table of multiples for my sevens. If you know your facts, this is fast. If you don't, you're going to use skip counting to build your table. Now that we've done that, we're ready to start dividing. And to do so, I'm always going to start in my biggest place value. I know that feels strange because when we're adding or subtracting or even multiplying with standard algorithm, we always start in our smallest place value. But for division, I'm going to start by breaking up my biggest pieces first. So let's look here. I've got a 3 in the thousands place. So really it means 3,000. And I'm thinking of those 3,000s. 
I'm going to ask myself, if I was splitting up my thousands evenly, do I have enough thousands to make seven groups? Well, I've got three, and I want to make seven groups. If I had $3,000 bills, could I hand them out evenly to seven people? I couldn't. I don't have enough. I could make zero groups of seven. If I made zero groups of seven, that would be like using zero of those thousand dollar bills. I didn't use any. So I'm gonna do the subtracting. Three minus nothing leaves me with three. I still have three of those bills that I didn't use. So I'm gonna go to the bank and I'm gonna change them in for hundred dollar bills. I'm gonna say, here are my three thousand dollar bills. I would like them put into hundreds. And all I do is have to move that three next door. That's how I get that. Now instead of seven in the hundreds, I have 37, 37 hundreds. Now I need to take my 37 hundreds and divide it by seven. To do that, I'm gonna look over here on my place value chart, and I'm gonna look for the multiple of seven that's the closest to 37 without going over. So I'm gonna start at the top, start working my way down. Ooh, we're getting closer. 35 looks good, it's close to 37. Let's check out the next multiple. Ooh, that's 42, it's too big. So my closest multiple of seven to 37 is 35. I'm gonna write 35. I could use up 35 of those. And if I used up 35 of those, how many groups of seven could I make? I could make five groups of seven. I'm gonna write my groups on top. That's how many groups of seven I could make. And if I did that, I would be using up 35 of those hundreds. I'm gonna subtract away what we used and I can see I've got two hundreds left. So again, I can imagine that I went to the bank with my two hundreds and I said, I'd like to change these two hundred dollar bills in for ten dollar bills. To do that, I'm gonna move them next door into the tens place and now I've got 24 tens. Now we can divide our 24 by seven. Taking a look down our table of multiples, I'm looking for the multiple of seven that's closest to 24 without going over. Oh look, 28 is too big. It's bigger than 24. But 21 is close without going over. I could use up 21. And if I used up 21 of them, I would have enough to make three groups. So my groups go on top. The amount I used goes on the bottom. I do my subtracting and I have three tens left over. I'm going to the bank again. I'm gonna go change my tens in for $1 bills. To do that, I just move my remainder next door into the ones place, and now I'm looking at the number 38. Again, going down my list of multiples. Aha, 35 is close without going over. 42 is too big. So I'm gonna use 35 of those ones, and it would let me make five groups of seven. So I'm gonna put five for my groups, and I'm gonna subtract away the 35 I would use to make those five groups, and I have three left over. I don't have any more place value places to work with, so this three is going to become my remainder. Looking at this, I can see I've got a five in the hundreds, a three in the tens, and a five in the ones. So my answer is going to be 535 remainder three. Let's practice the strategy again. Remember, I'm going to set up a place value chart for my dividend and a table of multiples for my divisor. Since I'm dividing a four digit dividend, I'm gonna set up a four place value chart. I've got 4,000, 500, zero tens, three ones, And then I'm gonna set up a table of multiples for my divisor, which is six. As I go down the list, I am just building based on my facts for six. 
If you know your sixes, that goes faster. If you don't know your sixes, you're just skip counting by sixes. So I started with six, added six more to get to 12, added six more to get to 18, and so on. Remember, any fact you're not solid on, you should take the time to do the adding or use other strategies to build your table of multiples. If you have an error in your table of multiples, it's going to impact your division. All right, now that I have my divisor on a place value chart and my table of multiples for my, oops, I'm sorry, I've got my dividend on a place value chart and I've built a table of multiples for my divisor, we're ready to divide. Let's start here in the thousands place. I have four thousands. Since I'm dividing by six, I don't have enough to make one group. I would need six to make at least one group, so I'm going to put a zero. I didn't make any groups. If I didn't make any groups, I didn't use any, and I still have four left. I'm going to take my leftovers and move them next door. Now I'm looking at the number 45. Looking down my table of multiples, I want the number that's closest without going over. Aha, right here. So I can make seven groups, and that would use up 42 pieces. Seven groups using up 42 pieces, which leaves me with three. Three goes next door, and now I'm working with 30 in the tens place. Same strategy, let's go down our table of multiples. Aha, a perfect match. I can make five groups of six, and that would use up all 30 pieces. Five groups, minus 30, and there's nothing left over. I don't have anything to carry next door. So now I'm going to look at the three in the ones place, and I can see I don't have enough to make a group. If I don't have enough to make a group, I'm going to put a zero. I didn't use any pieces, and I still have those three left over. Since I don't have another place value place to move them to, I'm going to call it a remainder. Look carefully. Don't get tricked. My answer is 750 remainder 3. People are always tempted to say 75, but look, my 7 is in the hundreds place, my 5 is in the tens place, and there's a 0 in that ones place. The number I have is 750 not 75. So make sure if you have a zero in your ones place, you don't cut it off. 750, remainder three. But what if I have a bigger divisor? Take a look at this problem. I can see that I have a dividend, like I'm used to, but my divisor is larger. It's a two-digit divisor, and sometimes that can feel stressful and make you think the rules are different. They're not. We can use the exact same strategy. I'm going to start by building a place value chart. And I'm going to put my dividend, 8,291, on my place value chart, just like I always have. And then I'm going to set up my table of multiples. And just like we've done every other time, my table of multiples is going to be for whatever my divisor is, which is 13. Now, most kids don't have their 13s memorized, which means we really have to get into that skip counting. And if that's hard for you, you should take the time to write it out like an addition problem and keep adding 13 in. Make sure your table of multiples is correct. If you have an error in your table of multiples, you will have mistakes in your division. 13, 26, 39, Ooh, to do the next one, I'm going to add the 3 first, 39, 40, 41, 42, and then add the 10, 52, 65, 78, oh, I'm going to go over again, I'm going to add the 3, 78, 79, 80, 81, now add the 10, so that's 91, 104, 117. All right, I have a table of multiples built. And now I can start dividing. Starting here in the thousands place, I have eight thousands. And if I look over here, I would need 13 to make at least one group. So I know I cannot make any groups in the thousands place. Since I made zero groups, I used zero pieces, and I've got eight left over. I can take my eight and move it next door. And now I'm working with 82 hundreds. 
moving down my table of multiples. Aha, 91 is too much. So I can make six groups of 13, which would use up 78 pieces. Do my subtracting, and I've got four left over. Move my four next door, and I'm working with 49 tens. Again, I'm going to go right down my table of multiples. Oh, it looks like three is the group I'm going to use. I can make three groups, which would use up 39 pieces. That leaves me with 10 left over. I know it looks stressful, but don't feel stressed. I'm going to take this whole 10 and move it next door. And now I'm working with 101. See how I took the 10 and here's the 10 moved over? 101 going down my list. Ooh, that one's too big. It's close, but too big. I can make seven groups and that would use up 91. Seven groups would use up 91. Oops, I don't know why I did that. That was incorrect. There we go. That's what I mean. All right, and I've got 10 left over. 10 with nowhere for it to go. So my 10 is my remainder. My answer is going to be 637 remainder 10. All right, it's your turn. Try it out and see um, if you can get to the right answer. I have a larger number, so I'm not going to stress. I know that if I've got a five digit divisor, all I have to do is set up five places on my place value chart. So instead of going out to the thousands, I'm going to go to the ten thousands, the thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. And then for my table of multiples, I'm going to build multiples for 18. I don't have 18s memorized, and it's hard to do 18s in my head. I'm going to use a piece of scratch paper as I build my table, and I'm just going to keep adding 18 each time to make sure I don't have any errors, which could cause me to get the wrong answer. All right, now that our work is set up, go ahead and try it out. See if you can get to the right answer. Pause the video and then check your work against mine. All right, check your work. Did you get it correct? Look through each of my steps and see if you can spot where your error was, or give yourself a pat on the back if you got this tricky problem correct. All right, let's review our place value division strategy. First, put your dividend on a place value chart. Remember, dividend is the amount you're starting with. Then, build your table of multiples for your divisor. That's the number you're dividing by. Finally, divide place by place until you've finished. All right, you may move on to the practice work.